Today we're going to talk about how to install the optical end stop on the Big Tree Tech GTR version 1.0. So I need to tell you a little bit about the end stop to start. So I'm going to zoom in on the end stop real quick here. And as you can see, there's three letters written that correspond to pins. So if you look over here, you see G, S, and V. That stands for ground, signal, and voltage. So knowing that, we'll need to know where to connect it on the board next. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna show you in uh, the website for Big Tree Tech. So on here, what you can see is that they have the end stop pins. And notice how it says E0 diag, E1 diag, and then E2 diag. These are probably going to be used for filament runout, but they could have other purposes. There's also a fourth pin here, but it's unmarked as to what it is. But we can check the pin numbers down here for them, and there may be a usage inside the pinout file for the Big Tree Tech GTR version 1.0. But down below, we have X minus, Y minus, and Z minus. What that means is those are our end stops, so we have X minus. Y minus and Z minus, like I just said before, and then we have the voltage, ground, and then the signal pin is the individual pin down below. So I'm gonna show you how to hook this up. So over on my workbench, I've actually set up the traced colors connected to the end stop over here. So black is ground, the blank one right here is actually signal, and the red one that I marked is going to be voltage. So we're going to follow the diagram that I just spoke about. So for the X axis, we're going to do voltage. Then it's going to be ground. And the very last pin on the bottom, which I'll show you in just a second, is actually your signal pin. So you'll connect that right over here. And once that's connected, you're all set there, but now we need to set up the firmware. Now there's not a lot you have to change in the firmware, so I'm just gonna do a walkthrough. So I'm actually using a, uh, a drive here that allows me to use the actual SD card. So I'm gonna slide this in here, and I'll put Amazon affiliate links in the description to where you can find similar products. And just so everyone knows, no one's paying me or sponsoring me to do this tutorial. So I will be placing those links for your convenience. So I just placed that in the computer. So I'm going to go over to VS Code now. So inside VS Code, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to load the actual... Uh, Firmware. So I'm going to walk you through the process in just a second. So as you can see right here, we have the Explorer. So I'm going to click on that. Then I'm going to say open. Then I'm going to go to my downloads folder. And as you can see, I've unzipped already a Marlin firmware folder. So I'm going to double click on that. Then I'm going to go to the next folder below. So you have Marlin, then Marlin, then I'm gonna say select folder. Once the folder is selected and loaded, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the Marlin folder, then we're gonna to go to the source folder, then the core folder, then boards.h. Inside here, we're gonna search on gtr underscore v, and that'll bring us to our board type, which is right here. So I'm gonna copy that, then I'm going to close out of boards.h. I'm going to minimize the core in the source folder and go to configuration.h. Inside here, I'm going to search on motherboard. And as you can see, the default motherboard being the ramps, we're actually going to paste ours over this. 
Then we're going to go up here and change the serial port to negative one. And after we change the serial port, we're actually going to do a search on end stops. So we'll do end stop. And this will bring us to the end stop settings. And as you can see, there's three that are enabled by default. And just so you know, you only need three when you're using a 3D printer. And the rationale behind that is you're trying to find the zero point, for instance, on a Cartesian plane with three axes or axi or axes, I think. Um, it's going to be X0, Y0, and Z0. And then you count out from there. So just so you know, you don't need to enable the other ones. So down here on the actual end stop that I showed you, there is circuitry for the end stop pull-ups and pull-downs. You could use these by uncommoning them for the particular end stop that you're using. But in this case, you really don't need it. But that's just something here to smooth out the voltage so that it could be 3.3 volts or whatever they're looking for as close to it as possible. It's a rounding type of thing. So down here, we also have inverting. For this particular end stop, I don't believe there's inverting that needs to be done. But if it does say triggered, instead of open, when it should be open, then you can always change the false to a true and the true to a false. So now that we know that, we just need to know how to load the firmware. So I'm going to go over to platformio.ini. And right now it's set for the Mega 2560. So we need to change the chipset. So we're going to search again on GTR underscore V. And that'll bring us to our default environment. So I'll copy that. And then I'll scroll up to the top and I'll paste it over the Mega 2560. Now I'm going to do a clean, which is the little garbage can over here. So in case you have another build in there, it won't fail as easily. And then I'm going to click on the checkbox to actually build it. Now this may take a few moments. As you can see, it's probably pulling down the framework and then starts the compiling of the multiple compiles. And that's why they call it building. So once this completes, what we're going to do is go over to the .pio folder. And we're going to open that up. And inside here, you'll see the GTR underscore V1 underscore zero. So you're going to click on that. And then down here, you'll see that it's firmware.bin. So you can right click on that. And you actually can reveal in the Explorer. So this is what it's going to look like. Let me just drag it over here. So firmware.bin. So now that we know where that is, we also know that our D drive currently has a file on it. This is actually a G code file or a printer file, but we also have firmware.cur. That means that it's the current firmware that was recently loaded. So if we go back over here, we can right click on this and we can say send to the D drive. Then we can verify that it's there. And this should change being the firmware.bin or binary to actually firmware.cur if it loads correctly. So I'm going to go back to the desktop and I'm actually going to install this for you. So I'm going to pop out the drive and I have the drive over here. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to slide it into our drive over here for our SD card. And once that's in there, I'm gonna connect the USB. But the problem with this right now is that the power is set for direct PSU power or power supply unit power. So I'm gonna move the jumper over to the other two pins so that we can power off the USB. That'll also load our firmware. So I'll connect that. And this will take a few seconds. There's a flashing light down here. And now you can hear that there's a beep on the computer, which means it's connected. So the next thing I'm actually going to show you is Pronterface. And what's going on in Pronterface is that we're going to be able to test our actual software with Pronterface. So what I'll do is I'll bring that up so you can see what I'm doing. 
So over here, we have the COM port already established. If you don't know what the COM port is, you can always go over to your desktop and you can do device manager. So you can type device and it'll bring up your device manager over here. And on here, you can check for the ports. Now COM port one is always common on a computer. Usually there is one, if not two. And then you have COM port 14, which is our USB device that we're using. So I'm going to close that and I'm going to connect. And so if you get a good connection, you'll see connecting and then you'll see printer is now online. So to test the end stop, what we're going to do is we're actually going to click or type in, excuse me, the G code M119. And this shows your end stop status. So as you can see, we have on the X minimum a end stop connected being the optical end stop and it says open. And then the other two say triggered. The reason that they say triggered is because nothing's connected. So once you connect an end stop, they may still stay triggered depending upon the end stop, but you can always change the logic inside the firmware like I just showed you. So I'm gonna place a piece of paper inside this end stop and if you can see the little light it's going to go out so we've just tripped the end stop so i'm going to do the same command again of m119 and as you can see it now says triggered so i'll remove it and we'll test to make sure that it works again see the light went back on and we'll do the m119 yet again now it says open so if you like my tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe and thank you for your time.